and welcome back everybody and today i am doing another fortran video and this time i'm going to go into objects and how to code up your own classes or types or whatever you're trying to do so if that all sounds cool to you please give this video a like and subscribe okay so in here this is the main program and i have some types declared i have some reels and then these are the two types we're going to go into looking at and then i'm just doing some of the function calls with them now here is the module that is actually containing all those types and here's all the constants and we're going to go into this line by line and i'm going to show how you can create your own structure so if you want to create your own you can you can do it as well i'm using these two parameters these are my constants i have pi defined and i have epsilon naught and because i'm doing electron stuff I'm, I'm just using these to be somewhat accurate even though my pi is very much not accurate and now these are the main two types i have a particle and then i also have an electron so first let's look at the particle the particle itself has a radius and mass field element and then it also contains this procedure now a procedure in this case is similar to class methods where i have this class method called cross area and it's being pointed towards ca now i'm going to go more into that in a moment but first let's look at what the electron has so here it also has a field element it has charge and we can also see it's extending the particle so this is a little bit of polymorphism and i just wanted to show this just so you can get a little bit of a full picture and it, it also has its own procedure and this is the electric potential and this will be defined or this will be pointed towards ep okay so now going into the actual methods that we have defined here i have one as a subroutine and one as a function so we can see the different types of diction going on here now the subroutine only has one argument and it's this this is meaning this object you can see here i have this class particle intense in this so when i'm calling this function and this will be a bit more clear in the main it's being fed this instance of the class <laughs> and then in it it's gonna call the field elements of this particle so in this case the particle has a radius so it's calling radius it's adding it twice because it's doing a cross section of two particles hitting each other and cross section is assumed to be a circle so it's doing pi r squared and it's just printing that out so it's not really returning it i just wanted to show how a subroutine works now similar for the ep now this is a function but the electrons being pointed to this as well you can see the first argument again is this and that means this electron and the next argument is the radius now because this is a function call it has a result and i define the result as v or the electric potential and both of these are being inserted in so these are the arguments We're inserting electron it has the intent in and it's this and then we also have a radius it also has intent in and then here i'm just doing some of the math with it so this is the electric potential function okay so this is another thing to be aware of you can see here i have this percent charge and that is how you call the field elements so similar to how in the subroutine i was calling, talking about this percent radius that's that's me calling the radius of that instance of the class same idea for this i'm calling this percent charge which is calling charge of the electron now radius here is what's being inserted as an argument if i put this percent radius if i put this this is now calling the radius of the electron while if i put this this is now using the radius that's inserted as an argument so those, those are two things to be aware of and sometimes that's just a mistake that's made if, if you're just coding quickly and it's, it's very easy to make that mistake all right so now now i have both panes up and i have the main function here or the main program here on the left and i have all the module code on the right this is just so we can compare and see how we're doing things and just from the get-go i have a radius a mass and a charge defined so that's rmq then x is for that electric potential which we'll use in the future now first we have a particle an electron and these are defined right here and the electron itself only had one field element but if you remember here it actually extends the particle so in truth it actually has three field elements so the particle only has radius and mass but the electron has radius mass and charge okay so now i have a third pane in the bottom and that is my terminal also just know i'm using fpm just so i can compile and run everything more quickly if you don't know how to use fpm i have a video that goes into what it is and how to install it and how to use it really cool project i'll post it up right now okay so you can see it printed out exactly how it's supposed to so we have the radius p mass so that's the particle radius the particle the particle radius and that's the particle mass and then the electron has also a radius and a mass but also a charge and did all that handled all that so that's 
that's showing a little bit of the inheritance that's going on here with the electron and the particle. Now, if we think about, we also have a cross area subroutine. The cross area subroutine is defined within the particle, but because the electron also extends it, it also has access to that same subroutine call. Let's see here, I'm calling both of them right here. If I do run again, and we have both our statements, and because they have the same radius, it outputs the same value. And now finally, I have the electron, and now I'm calling the electric potential function, which you can see here, I'm calling it here. Now this is kind of going into more of the how that this statement works. So let's let's look at how this works. Now you can see when we did the cross area function, in our parentheses, we actually didn't put anything. Now what's happening underneath is because we're doing this percent call, this is that specific E particle that we defined earlier that's using this R and M and similar for E. So what goes into, into that this, that this, <laughs> is that specific instance of that class definition. So in this case, we're using these variables. So this is our specific instance of this P and E. And that gets inserted in this. That's why cross area, we actually don't insert anything in the parentheses. Now, electric potential has this and radius. Once again, this is taken care of by this percent symbol. And that's what's actually inserted for this or this. <laughs> but X, the radius in this case is an actual argument. So that, that is something we have to insert into the electric potential ahead of time. And because electric potential returns something, it's going to be a result. It's not going to just print out automatically. So I have it in this print statement so we can see it out in the terminal itself. Okay. And there you go. See it, uh, the electron called electric potential. It's inserted the radius and then it did some math and outputted what this potential would be. Now, just to also show because the electron extends the particle, but the particle doesn't have access to electron methods. If I actually replace this with a P, it would give us an error. And you can see we, we got some errors here. And if you think about it, that makes sense, right? The particle has no idea what an electron is. The electron has a connection to the particle, but it doesn't work the other way around. Okay, so one more thing that I wanna mention with the code that we have defined here, you can see that I have type, but then I also have class used kind of, kind of interchangeably. It's not truly interchangeably. Now my full understanding of this isn't complete. So if someone wants to add more to what I say here or even correct what I say here, it's much appreciated because it's more just from my understanding. But this is how I understand this, how type and class work. Class is a polymorphic descriptor. So when we're working with these functions and subroutines, it works as a dummy argument. And when you're inserting these arguments in here, so in this case, we're inserting a particle, we're inserting an electron, because they're working polymorphically, which polymorphic is a technical computer science term. It's kind of a overarching term for inheritance and how all these objects inherit from each other. But because class is a polymorphic descriptor, it's used as these dummy arguments for subroutine and function declarations. But when we're actually working with the code in the, like in our program main, we're using types because they're being defined and they're not dummy arguments in this case. We have clear variables, we're defining them, and then we're inserting them to function call. So most of the time you use type to describe everything. And when you're describing dummy variables, you use class. That's how I have understood it. Part of it is also if I get an error with one, I just flip it and then the error disappears. Not the best way to handle errors, but if someone wants to clarify that, that's always appreciated. But now that is what I have for you this week. Last week I was in the middle of finals. I didn't post anything. It is the end of the quarter riffraff that you didn't go through. Next week my video will be a bit late because I'm actually going out of town. So it will probably see it Saturday or Sunday. But that is what I have for you this week. If you like what I've been doing, please give this video a like and subscribe. Feel free to comment in the section below for any other requests or comments about the video. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.